Uh, very good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And at the outset, let me thank Dr. Kamni Rao like, for giving this interesting topic. Uh, this is uh, one case uh, where I'm sure everybody we will uh, come across. So I would talk on uh, borderline ovarian tumors today. I, uh, when uh, uh, they called me saying, can you talk? I said, fantastic, I have two cases which I recently treated. So this was a 28-year-old lady with one ectopic pregnancy. She had been to an infertility uh, hospital because uh, she had infertility and she had two failed IVFs and she passed history. She gives that she had an, some lab ovarian cystectomy. She didn't have the records of it. And this time when she went to the hospital, the doctor noticed on an ultrasound that she had a bilateral ovarian cyst. So as usual, we generally think, yes, it is a bilateral endometriosis. And the CA125, luckily for her, was normal. So the infertility specialist, she did a hysteroscopy, endometrial biopsy. She had a polyp, polypectomy and laparoscopy. They did an adhesiolysis and left ovarian cystectomy. The right ovary was so bad that they had to remove the whole of the right ovary. The histopathology comes as a borderline serous ovarian tumor and she was referred to me. So obviously now it was a borderline ovarian tumor when she called me and she said, she said, Rani, the leftover ovary looks very unhealthy. So it is a borderline ovarian tumor. So you do what you have to do from oncology point of view, but only thing leave behind the uterus for me. If you leave behind the uterus for me, I will manage her pregnancy. I said, okay. And we did for, went in for a laparoscopy. And when we went in for a laparoscopy, this was a picture. The left ovary, I just absolutely couldn't see. It was kind of like fluffy everywhere. And slowly as I started dissecting out and this was a picture which popped out. So this was the left out ovary there. So all of you will agree absolutely when this lady comes to you, you will say sorry I can't do anything with that ovary. So uh, from gynae onco perspective obviously like you know this ovary has to come out if not she's going to have recurrence. So she had a left salpingo oophorectomy, she had an omentectomy and we did a peritoneal sampling. And the final histopathology was again a borderline serous ovarian tumor and after she recovered, I sent her back to the infertility specialist for continuation of the IVF. And again the same month, I had another 22 year old lady, similarly past history of ovarian cystectomy, we don't have the histopathology. During LSCS, the gynecologist noticed that there was a mucinous material in the abdomen. And the ovaries, she couldn't visualize properly. Whatever they could visualize, they removed it for the biopsy. Luckily, she delivered a healthy baby boy and the biopsy taken came as a borderline mucinous tumor and patient came to me. So because the doctor had told me there was a mucin content in the abdomen, I knew I was dealing with almost a peritonic kind of a thing. So like, you know, I did an MRI, she had about three centimeter loculated left ovarian mass and multiple omental peritoneal nodules. We reviewed the first uh, histopathology slide before she got married. It was a borderline ovarian tumor. And this again during cesarean section was a borderline. So that means she had recurrence during pregnancy. Now this lady, she underwent a laparotomy. I couldn't do in a laparoscopy for her because it was a pseudomyxome peritonei picture. So she had that ovary, left side ovary where the tumor was there, whole of the left ovary and the tube was removed. Omentectomy, because it was a mucinous tumor, we did the appendix. We did a peritonectomy and also HIPAC. Now coming to the HIPAC, it's totally a different debate. Maybe later on I'll discuss with you. I don't want to waste time here. And this was the picture. Again, the final report came as a borderline mucinous tumor. Post-surgery, three months, she came for the review. She's absolutely okay now. So... This is how I'll be telling, don't worry about the big list, each one is only one slide there. So uh, previously borderline ovarian tumor were also known as uh, low malignant potential tumor and FIGO recognized this way back in 1971 itself. Now for some reasons, uh, most of the people they do get confused with uh, epithelial ovarian cancers and I've also heard doctors telling that there is no borderline tumor, it's just a borderline management. These pathologists, they just don't know how to diagnose it. Okay, it's very wrong because there is an entity and do, we do have borderline ovarian tumors. Now, if you look at any borderline ovarian tumor, transforming to malignancy is only about 0.5%. 
So if we see if a lady has a fibroid, a fibroid undergoing gliomyosarcoma is only 0.2 to 0.7 and we don't even say fibroid is a pre-malignant. But whereas here borderline we say it is a pre-malignant, be careful, be careful. So borderline, it, uh, the incidence we see about 10 to 15 percent of all ovarian tumors. It's commonly seen in the younger age group. 50 to 80 percent are seen in stage 1. Majority are benign. Some are aggressive. They do have very good prognosis. There are few poor prognostic features that uh, only the specialist will be able to tell us. Now coming to the histology, how important is the histology type for us? Serous is the most common type, about 50% of them. And mucinous is another next one, 46. Now both the types, there are implants which are known as invasive and non-invasive implants. Non-invasive implants, it's very good, absolutely nothing to worry. Invasive implants are the one which generally recur. Now coming to the rare ones, also could be a mixed endometroid, clear cell, Brenner type. But the common ones, what we generally see in clinical practice is serous type and the mucinous type. As I said, prognosis, if any lady has a borderline ovarian tumor, the prognosis is very, very, very good. So you really don't have to scare her that she has a pre-malignant disease or anything. Because if you see, if it is a serous type, 98% of them, the five-year survival is fantastic. Even in mucinous, yes, 97% fantastic, be it an early or a advanced stage. So gist is, they have a very good prognosis. Please don't scare the patient. How do they present to us? Yes, they can come to us. We do know mucinous tumors. We have seen during a graduation time, a lady can come like a nine months pregnant. But in your specialty, yes, when you're evaluating, you can come across even with a small ovarian cyst. Most of the diagnosis is made on histology. If you go for CA125, you'll be surprised, you know, CA125 won't be elevated in these patients. Now you do a CT, MRI, whatever it is, you can't tell is it a benign, borderline or a malignant. So no wonder always you tell the patient, yes, it could be this, it could be that. We'll go in, remove it, do a frozen and then only we'll be able to tell you. So now coming to surgery. So I know I'm standing in a forum like where you are preserving everything. And here you have an ovary. Now what are you going to do? Are you going to remove everything? Are you going to leave any ovary or no? So as I said, should we go for a very radical surgery like how I do? Or should we go for a very conservative fertility sparing surgery? Now radical, I mean, uh, there was a study in American society uh, of all the gynecologists. And they said like, what is your practice? So quite a few responded, they said, yes, we do hysterectomy, peritoneal washing, we do peritoneal biopsy, omental biopsy, lymph node biopsy. But what does it say? Radical surgery, should we do omental sampling? The gist is, you read the last sentence, the recommendation is, yes, you have to do an infracolic omentectomy because it is very, very important. There can be deposits over there and you have to inspect the peritoneum because there could be some macroscopic lesions. So whatever lesions are there, you have to remove. So one thing is, when you have removed the ovary, if possible, please remove as much as omentum as you can. Now coming to lymph node sampling. Yes, not all of us are trained to do lymph node sampling, but absolutely don't worry. If you're dealing with a borderline ovarian tumor, you don't have to do lymph nodes. So that is a sigh of relief, isn't it? So just remove that ovary, remove the omentum. You don't have to do any lymph node sampling. If it is a mucinous tumor, yes, please remove that appendix because we know it could be a primary appendicular or it could be an ovarian. So you have to remove appendix if it is a mucinous tumor. Now, radical approach, as I said, all this surgery, you, we can do two ways. One is laparoscopy and one is by a laparotomy. Now, there is always a debate. People who can't do laparoscopy, they say, no, 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 don't do laparoscopy because you can't do justice, you can't do staging. That is very untrue because studies have shown that if it is a small ovarian tumor, you can put it in an endo bag and remove it safely. There won't be any port site metastasis, there won't be any disease dissemination. But obviously, if you're dealing with a huge tumor, don't go to puncture the tumor, aspirate and then do. Please don't do that. If it is a huge tumor, go for a laparotomy. But if you feel it is a small one, you can do laparoscopy. Yes, laparoscopy is the best because less additions, patient will recover quickly and yes, you can start off your IVF early. Now, recurrence between a laparoscopy and a laparotomy is the same. Only thing, it depends on you. Make sure you don't spill the content into the abdomen. Now, as I said, what you have to do, first is do peritoneal washing. 
obviously fertility sparing you just remove the ovary which has been affected remove the omentum do a peritoneal biopsy if it is a mucinous do appendicectomy and as i said you can do either a laparoscopy or a laparotomy conservative surgery how safe it is it is absolutely safe nothing to worry at all now only thing leave behind the healthy ovary and the uterus now if a lady is unlucky she is born with only one ovary and that has an ovarian tumor if you can do a cystectomy without spilling it that is good if you can leave behind any healthy ovary if not yes a lady has to get out that ovary and then you give her the other options now indications of uh, cystectomy as i said like be very sure if you are doing a cystectomy make sure that there is no spillage make sure there is no tumor anywhere else only then you do a cystectomy if not please don't do a cystectomy you have one more ovary then just remove that whole ovary now coming to the relapse be it a cystectomy or if you have removed an ovary or a radical surgery if you see if it is a simple cystectomy recurrence is very very high you have done an oophorectomy yes recurrence in the other ovary also is high but does it affect the survival it doesn't affect the survival okay so borderline are so good that it doesn't affect the survival whatever you done but only thing as i said remove the macroscopic disease what is visible there so conservative surgery as i said the evidence is that yes you can there is no literature which says you can't so yes you can do conservative surgery and as i told you remove that ovary omentum peritoneal biopsies and peritoneal washings now restaging for example somebody has done a surgery if they sent to me should i do now if you write a letter and send saying yes i've seen the peritoneum she doesn't have disease anywhere else i've taken a omental biopsy i've done this if she comes to me i'll say no you don't need a restaging but if you have not like what had happened in the my previous two cases then i have to do restaging the restaging is only to tell the patient how is your recurrence going to be the survival is going to be the same as i said whether i do restaging or don't do the survival is the same it is just to tell how your prognosis is going to be that is the only role for restaging as i said restaging has no impact on survival that is the gist of the thing now coming to does she need chemotherapy absolutely no borderline mucinous tumor doesn't require any chemotherapy now fertility as i said those patients who had a borderline ovarian tumor will they become pregnant it says one third of the patient will conceive so of all the patients who had surgery yes one third who want to become pregnant they will become pregnant and often they do require ovulation induction now the safety of it we do all know they were a big hue and cry when they said the ivf drugs will lead to borderline ovarian tumors high incidence of ovarian cancers i did a lot of research on this and it is it is very very difficult to come to any conclusion and please don't take it word by word what they see that is mainly because we really don't know whether those people who had ovarian cancers did they have any risk of braca1 and braca2 in them if they had then whatever sudden they would have developed so we can't say it is because of the infertility drug that they have developed malignancy over there so but only thing be a little cautious unless we have evidence strongly to say either yes or no just put in a word to the patient and as i said role of ovulation the ivf drugs in borderline ovarian tumors are been currently used and ivf rates are supposed to be satisfactory and the effect of fertility on the prognosis of the borderline ovarian tumor nothing it doesn't change at all and there is no negative impact of pregnancy on the recurrence so that means happily you can treat her with your treatment protocols now this was a study which they did people who conceived people who didn't conceive but only thing if you see like any other people general it was the only age with increasing age obviously people didn't conceive other than that it didn't matter at all in ladies with borderline ovarian tumor follow up how should we follow up these patients general recommendation every 3 months during the first 2 years you just have to do a pelvic examination clinical examination and a transvaginal ultrasound as i said ca125 please don't go for it because it won't be accurate recommended follow up is almost 10 years because there can be very late recurrences also so summary is borderline ovarian tumors are the ovarian tumors with a very good prognosis and about 10 to 20% of all epithelial tumors are borderline role of conservative surgery yes it should be an option laparoscopic technique can be used but are reserved 
for a well trained laparoscopic or i would say well trained minimal invasive surgeons and restaging as i said it is no role for it if you have done a proper visualization of the abdomen peritoneum everything if not yes we need to do restaging chemotherapy absolutely no chemotherapy now completion of surgery after she has delivered should we remove that other ovary it's a debate and if the patient is educated comes for a regular follow up fantastic you don't have to go remove that other ovary fertility drugs are well tolerated ovarian stimulation and exposure to high estrogen doesn't appear to increase the risk of recurrence nor do pregnancy have negative impact only thing is careful selection of patients when you are going to operate is the most important thing so thank you i think i was just 2 minutes over time thank you so much